Hello and thanks for using TickBoom. A student has sent me through this question which reads, show by geometrical means or otherwise that if Z1 and Z2 are complex numbers such that the modulus of Z1 equals the modulus of Z2, then Z1 plus Z2 on Z1 minus Z2 is purely imaginary. So I think the hint in this question is that we're told to show it by geometrical means which I think is going to involve drawing up these numbers on an argand diagram and then seeing what we can conclude, particularly using the fact that the modulus of the two complex numbers is equal. And then in theory, for a complex number to be purely imaginary, so for this addition and then subtraction of the two numbers divided by each other, for that to be purely imaginary basically means that it lies on the imaginary axis or in other words the argument of this thing is either plus or minus 90 degrees. So let's see if we can get there by um, first of all starting with an argand diagram. So I'll just uh, draw up a diagram and because most of I think the working here will be visual I'll make it a big diagram. So here we'll have our uh, real plane and our imaginary axis uh, and the origin. So I want to draw Z1 and Z2. Now we're not told what they are, so I can really in theory put them anywhere. But uh, what I might do is I'll put Z1, on, I'll kind of measure, I'll use my grid paper to measure to try and help draw this somewhat to scale because I think it will help them with the understanding. So for Z1 I might move across um, 2 and then up 2, 4, 6. So I'll just call that Z1. And for Z2 I'll, I'll do the opposite. I'll go across 3 and up 1. So we'll go 2, 4, 6 and then up 2. So I'll call that Z2 and I'll just uh, connect those to the origin. And because we're told that the, um, the modulus of Z1 is equal to the modulus of Z2, I know that these two, the length of these two um, lines are equal. Now, um, what we're trying to show relates to Z1 plus Z2 on Z1 minus Z2. We're trying to show that that is purely imaginary. So I think it will help to draw each of Z1 plus Z2 and Z1 minus Z2. So Z1 plus Z2, we could kind of combine the horizontal movements and the vertical movements to get the addition. So here for Z1 I moved across 2 and for Z2 I moved across 6. So I want to move across 2, 4, 6, 8. And for Z1 I moved up 6 and for Z2 I moved up 2. So I want to move up 2, 4, 6, 8. So that point there is going to be my Z1 plus Z2 drawn somewhat to scale. Now um, what we can also do is think about what these lines here represent because this line going from Z1 to Z1 plus Z2 essentially involves moving over 2, 4, 6 and moving up 1. And that's exactly what I did here, 2, 4, 6 and up 1. So I can conclude that this vector here, if we think about the complex numbers as vectors, is the same as this vector here, it's just starting from a different point. So I can conclude that that's going to have the same length. And another thing, like using a similar approach, is to say to get from Z2 up to Z1 plus Z2, I move over 1 or over 2, sorry, and then up 2, 4, 6. And that's exactly what I did here, over 2 and then up 2, 4, 6. So this line here will have the same length as this line here. And given the modulus of Z1 and Z2 are equal, and we these two are equal, and we've shown this is equal to this and this is equal to this, it means all the sides are equal. So not only do we have effectively a parallelogram, but it's also a rhombus. And that's going to be useful 
because one thing in particular we know about a rhombus is that its diagonals intersect at 90 degrees. And if you remember I mentioned earlier that if we can show that the argument of this is either equal to um, nine, plus or minus 90 degrees, then we're going to be on this imaginary axis. So we're kind of getting close here. Um, the next thing that will be helpful, so we've kind of looked at Z1 plus Z2. Now let's look at Z1 minus Z2. So um, what we can do is if we start from Z1, um, rather than moving over to Z1 plus Z2, let's see what happens when we effectively subtract Z2. So if we come down one and back three, or oh, sorry, down two and back six, two, four, six. So if I draw that point there, what I've effectively done in kind of coming here is I have subtracted Z2. That's effectively the vector. It's the same as the vector Z2, but I've gone the opposite direction. So it's effectively um, negative Z2. So if I start from the origin and come from there to this point here, that vector there is essentially from Z1 minus Z2. Now, that vector, we can see, I mean, drawing this to scale kind of helps because I can see almost visually that it's the same as this vector, albeit just starting from different places. And um, what that means is that this line here is also essentially the vector Z1 minus Z2. And because that line is one of the diagonals of this rhombus, Z1 minus Z2 is one of the diagonals and Z1 plus Z2 is the other diagonal, I can know that all of these angles are 90 degrees because uh, the diagonals of a rhombus intersect um, or they're perpendicular to each other. So now what we can get to is that um, if we think about the argument of each of these lines. So if I think about the argument of Z1 plus Z2, and if I think about the argument of Z1 minus Z2, I know that the difference between them is going to be this angle in here, and it's also going to be 90 degrees. So, um, from there, I can, I can start to get quite close to uh, the outcome that I need because I can say that the argument of, um, first of all, let's start with the argument of Z1 plus Z2. Oh, sorry, um, got that backwards. Let's start with the argument, first of all, of Z1 minus Z2, so this angle here, minus the argument of Z1 plus Z2. So that bigger angle minus that smaller angle is going to be equal to pi on two. Now what I'll do just to help get things in what will ultimately be this order is I'll say, I'll, I'll do a negative on each side. So I'll do minus the argument of Z1 plus Z2 uh, minus arg of Z1 minus Z2 is equal to pi on two. Now we know that the argument of one thing minus the argument of another is equal to the argument of the ratio. So I can now say um, arg Z1 plus Z2 on Z1 minus Z2 is equal to, and I'll bring the negative over also, negative pi on two. A negative pi on two is essentially coming to the imaginary axis just from beneath the, the real axis. So it's gonna lie somewhere on, on this um, axis, which means it's purely imaginary because it's solely on the imaginary axis. So I think that is the, the proof, um, geometrically at least. It all started by plotting the two points 
and then plotting z1 plus z2, coming to the conclusion basically um, using vector thinking that um, this is going to be a rhombus, then plotting z1 minus z2, um, and then concluding that these two parallel lines must be the same vector, they must then intersect at 90, and from there you can kind of play around with your arguments and show that it's going to fall exactly on the imaginary axis. So yeah, that was an interesting question to go through. I think whenever you're given something that involves the modulus of two complex numbers being equal, you can kind of hopefully instinctively think parallelogram and maybe even rhombus, it, it, it really depends, but you can, you can then draw conclusions from that. So um, we were in this question given the hint to try it geometrically. There probably is another way to, to prove this without the diagrams, just using um, the algebra of complex numbers. But I think this is a neat way to almost intuitively think about it because you get to see what's happening on the argon diagram. So hopefully you're able to follow along with that and it was helpful and uh, tick boom.